Well, we're here at the Daco stand at the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Expo, and uh, we've run into uh, run into a familiar face in David Russell. And uh, David, uh, running in the endurance uh, races for Nissan this year, um, yep. obviously that's uh, very exciting. But you're missing the main game, the regular, the yeah. regular meetings. Yeah, look, um, very excited to be part of the endurance program again for Nissan. Uh, it's my it, since since Nissan um, came into the sport at, at 2013, um, to be a part of their endurance campaign, you know, every year um, has been very special. But you know, we want to get some results this year. I'm looking forward to working with the team again and and really trying to um, put it put our best foot forward and and get cracking. So, how much time do you actually get in the car between now and uh, when you start the sand down? It's it's probably not as much as what we'd like. Um, I'm quite fortunate. I get to do. Um, some other extracurricular activities in GT racing in, in, uh, in the Endurance Championship, Bathurst 12 Hour and um, those types of uh, GT events. Uh, I'll have a seat fit in the supercar, uh, we'll do some test days, um, there'll be one in June and, and August and some co-driver sessions. Um, when you break it down to actual, la to, to actual laps you probably get less than probably, uh, it'd be, be about 60 laps in the car and then a few ride days. You don't get a lot of seat time uh, to do the testing. Do you think it's um, it's false economy? I mean, they're trying to obviously you know, cut the cost of testing and cut the cost for the teams. But for you drivers, would it be better if you could get some more seat time? And do you think it would make a you know, perhaps better standard of racing for some of the co-drivers who don't have your experience? Yeah, look, it, it'd be great to have a bit more time in the car. But th that's, I guess, essentially what the Super 2 Championship's for um, and, and other, other support categories. So whether you're doing GT racing, uh, you're doing Porsche Carrera Cup or Super 2. Um, a lot of those are to keep you sharp, but you, you're right, if you're in the actual supercar doing more lapping, um, there is a cost involved in that. And I think that's why they're trying to keep a cap on. The reason why they're getting experienced guys and people that they trust in the cars is because they um, put us in there and say, look, we haven't given you a whole lot of laps, but we know you're gonna be fast and safe and you got the experience. So um, it's sort of, that, that's why I guess um, the experienced guys are getting the gigs because um, they don't necessarily need all of the time. You had plenty of experience uh, behind the wheel of GT cars and in the Carrera Cup and that, uh, that sort of area. Sports car racing is just exploding all around the world, internationally yeah. throughout Asia as well. Uh, is that an area you'd like to do more, uh, more international stuff and you know, you're looking at that sort, of, uh, that sort of thing? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be involved in uh, two Spa 24 Hours, um, racing in um, Europe, Dubai, uh, in Asia, it's a Pang 12 hour. So that, I'm, I'm very passionate about that type of endurance racing. Uh, the, the cars are very fast, they're fantastic to drive. Um, you know, you, you, you definitely get a smile on your face driving them because it, it, they're they're a, they're a physical car to drive fast. So people talk about driving age, you've got ABS and traction control, but to drive these cars on the absolute edge is, um, is, is something special. So if you can do that and prolong that over, you know, and have that over an endurance race is, is very, very cool. And, you know, to, to finish a, a 24 hour race of, uh, let's say Spa 24 hour is definitely um, a great experience and one that I won't forget. I just want to do more of it. So that's the plan, hopefully, uh, you know, the, the talks are going reasonably well, but you've got to be able to get the seat and, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we go for this year. Long term, perhaps, Le Mans? Oh, it'd be great. Um, Le Mans, obviously, you have to be part of the WEC program. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a test with that Aston Martin um, a couple of years ago for their WEC program. Um, the significant part of uh, any program like that is it's, it's um, yeah, a multi-million dollar exercise to go and do something like that. Um, so look, there's significant backing that's required and, and in that case, even it seems at that level, um, drivers still need to sort of bring some backing with them. So um, that's where it becomes quite difficult. Now, speaking of backing here at the Daco stand, are there, yeah. what's the involvement between yourself and Daco? Um, I'm a personal um, ambassador for Daco. Um, so uh, they've, um, we've, we've had a relationship um, with Daco for six years now, so it's um, exciting to continue, have some continuity in that partnership. Um, I'm here doing, doing the trade show, of course, but also um, that's reflected in branding on, on the V8 supercar, on the Lamborghini, and also personally my helmet. So um, had, a, had a great relationship with them, and uh, there's a lot of trade activation that they do um, throughout the branding from different race cars, and um, yeah, it's working really well. Well, good luck for the rest of the year, both uh, behind the wheel of GT cars, but also particularly the Nissan for yeah. the Endurance Series starting at Sandown in September. But for now, David Russell, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thank you.